H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. In this project, uh, let me just tell it to you from beginning. Okay, how do we bring this folder also? To start with, whenever we you know come into this screen, okay, how how do we create a project first? First of all, we go to File, go to New, and then we cre create a Java project. Okay, then we can name it as. Uh, so we have to give some name to this project. Okay, so I'm just going to give it as project as uh, to be deleted. Okay, because after creating this, I'm going to delete it. I'm just going to explain it just because uh, you know, just to tell it that how do we create it, and then after creating it, I'll be deleting it. And you give some name to your project. Yesterday, I gave it as Java for testers. Okay, because we are going to discuss Java from the perspective of testers okay what they need to move into selenium okay so click on finish so after you click on finish you can see a uh, folder came up here and it is uh, named as to be deleted after this you right click on the project which you just created go to new and you see the list is coming up again here okay we created java project so ignore this next is project Ignore this again because a project has been created. Okay, either you create a Java project or some other kind of project. So ignore this because a project has been created. Now the next thing in the line is package. So now we're going to create a package here. Now pack, what does package do? Package combines your similar kinds of classes or similar kind of program together in one place. Okay, it holds, it, it acts like a package to hold similar kind of programs in one place and just name your package something and whenever you name your package the convention is the name of the package should be small starting with a lower case okay so just name something and click finish and in the package whatever you have created now right click again again the package go to new and just see this list is coming up again and you, you can see java project project and package this has been done the next thing which we need to do is class so click on class you okay, know name your class something I name my class at this place is data types okay so you can write data types okay Adisha I'll be taking your question just in a moment just a minute okay so we named the class here data types and click on finish so this way this page came up here all right so this is how i brought this class here and then i wrote this stuff public static void man and in that i i wrote this thing okay so this is how the page comes up here okay first we need, we create a project then we create a package and then we create a class all right now uh, all right so now there was a question by Dasha, what is SRC under project name? Okay, so you can see here, there is one folder came up here, SRC, and in that we created a package demo, in that we created a class. Yesterday also when we created our project, Java for testers, you can see SRC folder, some SRC folder came up here. SRC stands for source, okay? Why does it stand for source? Uh, for this, let me show it to you what is happening behind the scenes. Okay, whenever we create a project, what is happening on my local machine? What project is getting uh, created here? What is being stored in my local machine? Now, just to see where your project is getting stored, where a corresponding folder is getting created, just right click on the project which you've created, go to properties. Okay, and then you can see a location is coming up here, right? On, under the resource tab. You can see a location is coming up here. It says C Selenium 13 Java for testers. So this is the place where my project is getting stored. Okay. Now if I go to this location, copy this one, or you can you know manually go also, not a problem. Just paste it here. 
okay you can see fold something came up here okay inside that you can see there is one src folder also now this src folder is a folder which is storing all the code which i'm writing okay inside this folder if i open this one src folder you can see inside that there is one demo folder here now this demo folder is corresponding to the package demo which we created here package demo which we created okay if you open this one you can see all the classes which we created yesterday aeroplane car data type and printer it got stored here aeroplane car data type and printer if you open any of these let's say i open this printer okay you can see everything is being stored in a notepad file here okay so that src is telling me in which folder in my local machine this code is being saved right so the folder in which my, my code is being saved is src in my local system that is what it means by src so is it clear tisha okay All right so we created this project or uh, we created this class and we created this project also so now i'm going to delete this one how do we delete it just right click on it and click on delete okay so it asks you uh, are you sure you want to remove project and just check mark this also delete project contents on disk also and which cannot be undone so click on okay so, so that project got deleted all right so these were the variables which we declared now let's come back to the program which we created i said now we want to generalize this program which we created okay uh, what is this project doing this program doing currently is it is always going to print this output my name is deepinder no matter how many times you run this this is always going to run it is also going always going to print my name is deepinder okay now if i have to generalize it okay i just want whoever person comes to this printer who that person's name should be printed okay if ajay comes for printing okay it should be printing my name is ajay if sita is coming for printing it should be printing my name is sita okay so how do we generalize it to generalize it we are going to study the concept of parameters so what do we mean by parameters here where we declared the method public void print name inside these brackets just write string name what do we mean by string name that means name is a variable which is of type string it is equivalent to write you know x y z but whenever we declare the variable we just simply do not write x y z we declare it with a meaningful name okay so here name is a variable which is of type string and what do i mean by that when i write it here in this manner public void print string name this is called as signature of the method so by what do we mean by signature of the method this means that when we are going to call this method okay in this way laser jet dot print print name now here in this bracket we should be providing it with a name okay we should be providing it with something that is i should be providing it with a very something string variable let's say i write a j let me remove this all trying here okay so at the time of when we are when i'm calling this method this method should be expecting something of type string right so it is expecting a name here okay so at the run time this aj will be replacing this variable name what do i mean by run time by run time i mean when i click on this play button when the execution starts at that time this aj will be replacing the variable name okay and when it, it is going to replace the variable name now we should be using this name variable something in the 
execution code. This is the code which is to, going to be executed when the program is called, right? So let us write the code here. Okay, instead of printing deep in there every time, I want that it should be printing something. What we provide at the runtime. Okay, so what will happen in this case now? At the runtime, when I provide laserjet dot print name Ajay, so what is it going to do? It is going to print it, print the output as system dot out dot print ln. My name is Ajay. How? Because I've declared this variable name as a variable which is of type string. Okay, so when at the runtime I provide Ajay, this name variable will be replaced by Ajay. Okay, and here also name will be replaced by Ajay. So this value will be then passed on to this variable. Okay, so at the runtime, what will happen? It will be printing my name is Ajay. So why am I writing plus sign here? Plus sign means I'm concatenating two things. Concatenating means appending two things together, joining two things together. Okay, so in Java, we call, call it as concatenate. Okay, so when what are we appending here? First of all, I'm appending the thing which is written in the double quotes. That is my name is that is one phrase which is there. What I'm appending with it, I'm appending it with the variable name which is being provided at the runtime. Okay, so here you can see where I've written Ajay in the double quotes that is running fine. But here where I did not provide anything, it is giving me an error. It is underlining the variable and the method with a red line. Why? Because it is expecting me to write something here also. Because in the method where I've declared this signature, okay, this signature means at the runtime, it should be expecting a variable of type name. It should be getting something here. Okay, so let's write something here also. Okay, so if I write Sita here, right? Now, if you run this, you're going to get a different output here. Okay, so you can see <coughs> in the first case, it is printing my name is Ajay. And in the second case, it is printing my name is Sita. How is it happening? Let me just tell it to you from the beginning when we click on the play button. First of all, we click on this play button. What happens? Java looks for where is public static void main. It comes up here. Okay, this is the first step, first step. Okay, after that, it sees, okay, the object is getting created. The laser jet object is being created. This is the second step. Okay, then we are calling laserjet dot print name Ajay. That is, I'm asking the printer to print name Ajay. Okay, so this is the third third step. Okay, at third step, we're calling the method print name using the object. Okay, so what what happens at, at the third step? The control now moves to this place. It searches for where is public static public void print name, which is expecting a variable at the runtime. So it finds out. Oh, okay, here it is. Okay, let's take a question here. Uh, there's a question by Upasana here. Do we need to give all the names before running this script? Uh, yes, I got your point, Upasana. What are you asking? You are asking that at, you know it should be taking an input from user also. That you know it should ask user what name do you want to print. You want to ask that things, Upasana? Right. Okay, we'll be coming to that. Okay, when we understand some of the concepts, right? When we start understanding this terminology, then we'll be moving on to a concept where the program is taking a user input from the user. It is asking you, okay, what name do you want to print? So I write something, it is going to print that. We'll be moving on to that also, but gradually, step by step. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely not necessary that we have to provide it here only. Okay, so of course we can do it that that way also. That is, it should be taking an input from the user also. Uh, let me just draw these again. I just messed it up. It mess. Okay, this is one. This is step number one. Okay, then at the step number two, an object is getting created. At step number three, 
okay uh, we are calling the method and we are providing the name ajay now what happens at step number 3 control goes here it searches for various public set uh, void print name so it comes out and it sees it asks you are you a method who is expecting a variable it says yes i am that method who is expecting that variable okay so control says okay take a name ajay so this name variable this string name just means that name is a variable of type string that is why we are writing string name okay so now now this name variable which we have here this is replaced by ajay okay so it says okay replace your variable ajay okay now this name gets passed on to here so it it gets executed when the program gets executed it prints system dot out dot print lm my name is okay that is the thing which is written in the double quotes that is printed as it is and the plus sign is acting as a concatenator here it is concatenating two need two things together and this is the name okay the name value is a variable that means it can change so at the run time we are providing it ajay so it is writing my name is ajay okay so after printing this it comes back here the control comes back here at the fourth point okay so this is the fourth point then the control is coming back here so at the fifth step again the method is being called this print name method is being called but this time with the name sita so this process again happens the control again moves back here it moves back here it replaces the variable name with sita then it comes back to here that sita again gets passed on to this name variable then we print main, my name is sita and this is how this output is coming up here right so this is how the flow is moving and this is how the program is ex getting executed right so this is something called as parameter of the method we i just declare name as the variable so this we call as we call it as name is the parameter of the method which it is expecting let me write it here okay so here by putting a double slashes i am going to write name is the parameter which the method is expecting at run time okay so whatever i've written after these slashes after putting this double slashes whatever i write this is known as a comment in the code now this comment in the code is not considered as a part of program during execution it is just considered that this is just a message which needs to be conveyed to a human okay so whatever i write after double slashes that is not considered as a part of execution as a part of program during execution all right so we can write anything after writing these double slashes that is just it is just a method which needs to be conveyed to a human right so this name is a parameter and this is also called as formal arguments formal argument so this name is a formal argument and this ajay when we we are we are passing this variable this name at the run time this is called as actual argument similarly this sita is also an actual argument okay so ajay and sita these are actual arguments which we are passing at the run time and this name which is the generalized variable this is called as a formal argument or we also call it as this is a parameter or a formal argument right so this was first what i want to convey to you I just wanted to tell you about this right now just a minute okay now coming back to the concept of selenium okay most of you were joining yesterday's class for for the first time okay now today we are going to discuss okay uh, we are going to stop this java discussion here only okay we'll be discussing we'll be starting the uh, full time java discussion 
from the next week now what we are going to shift towards is we are going to shift towards is the concept of selenium the introduction to selenium what selenium is uh, from where can you download it Okay, the basic introduction to selenium. Okay, when we are going to start with it, we must be knowing right uh, what we are going to study. What selenium actually is this software, right? So here, what we are going to discuss is we are going to discuss why selenium, why not manual testing, what is testing, uh, what are testing types. Okay, what is selenium? Then what is automation testing? What are the variants of selenium available? and supported platforms and selenium and qtp comparison we'll be doing and of course the software is required for that and how can we switch from manual to automation testing we'll be discussing this stuff uh, this slide this topics may look uh, you know more in number but they're very small topics so we'll be you know covering it within some 